Today's Zoom presentation is on Shelley and what we've called mid-century modern. And uh, I was halfway through preparing this presentation when I found a wonderful article from Carol and Keating. It was already in last year's uh, North American Clubs magazine, which is wonderful. So I, I will refer to that, but um, this has sort of gone its own way. So thank you, Carolyn, for that. So today's format, I'm just going to look at, well, what do we think is mod, mid-century modern? Um, I'm just going to look at a local example from here uh, to me of uh, about mid-century modern. Some examples of Shelley that are very mid-century modern. A little bit of earlier Shelley looking at the, um, on the design continuum where that's come from and just a little bit of other China and then thanks and credit at the end. And then after that, hopefully we'll all have some show and tell items. So, well, what is mid-century modern? You might well ask. Um, it's, it's a term probably a little bit less understood than some of the others, Art Deco, et cetera. But it basically describes that particular aesthetic in architecture and art and design from around the end of World War II, uh, 1945, to about 1970. Um, and it's, it is a continuation of the modernist movement and go, grown out of and in reaction to the Art Nouveau Arts and Crafts and Art Deco it's basically focused on the new, its form follows function, it is shewing the traditional and uh, looking for, for new and modern. Um, some of the characteristics that you'll see, uh, the use of clean lines, simplified or streamlined designs, and lacking excessive ornamentation. I think that's one of the key things as well. Um, it's distinguishable from the Art Deco by being sort of having more organic forms, less purist geometry, more focus on fitting design and industrial production to the human or, or to nature. There's the color palette is, is quite different. They, is, they use some very distinctive colors and color mixes. And their influences include Scandinavian design. And in fact, uh, there have been sort of intimations of the mid-century modern style as early as the 1930s, where, for example, the Scandinavian designers had developed a rounded style of furniture and, and known as soft modernism. And then that, that sort of carries on to a lot of what is in mid-century modern. And one of the things to note is that it's it's quite hot these days, very um, mid-century modern furniture, glassware, ceramics, quite sought after. It's become, you know, quite a sort of a, quite fashionable. So out and about, you'll see it, you'll recognize the furniture, that sort of Danish furniture on the left, that mid-century modern, and the architecture, you know, the flat roofs, a lot of glass, a lot of hard surfaces, but kind of interesting. Anyway, there's an, an interesting um, example of the architecture is just uh, uh, not far from my house. It's a place called the Rose Seidler House. And it, when it was completed in 1950, um, Rose Seidler House was apparently the most talked about house in Sydney designed by a young architect called Harry Seidler for his parents, Rose and Max. The house overturned almost every convention of suburban home design to create a bold and optimistic vision for a new way of living. The house today remains one of the finest examples of the mid-century modern domestic architecture in Australia, and its furniture and fittings form one of the most complete post-World War II design collections in public ownership. Um, it's only a suburb away from me, and it's open to the public free on Sundays. So I've um, 
visited it again recently and I sort of imagined my beautiful mid-century modern Shelley gracing this, this dining table, but was very disappointed to find out that Harry Seidler furnished the whole place, even to the Russell White American modernist dinner set he eventually talked his mother into using instead of her traditional Viennese set. And I found these examples on eBay. So anyway, at least I had imagined my Shelley would have fitted in very nicely there, but as it was, it didn't happen. They used to have an annual 50s fair there, which was a lot of fun. But let's talk about some Shelley. So one of the things about the mid-century modern is the pattern and color. So mostly you'll see abstract or simplified designs. Sometimes they're linear, but not really like Art Deco, generally a bit more organic. The often more, what I describe as murky shades and unusual color mixes. So I'd love to hear what other people, how other people would describe these colors. There's gotta be a better way of describing it, but murky seems to be the best way I can come up with often stylized nature themes. Um, in Carolyn's article, she, she noted that the names that Shelley chose for the, the categories of their wares in this period, they chose you know, music names, mood names, place names, famous characters and geometric and nature themes. And we'll see some of those in, when we're looking at the, at the pieces that we look at, at coming up. Now, apart from pattern and color, there's also shape. So mid-century modern on Shelley, the shape, the main thing about the mid-century modern was simple and new. And these are the shapes here that I think really, really fit the mid-century modern that Shelley put out. So Carlisle was introduced in 1950. That's the one on the left. And although it has the ornamentation of a foot, um, it's otherwise quite simple and it fits what I think of as a modern shape. Uh, the next one along Sterling is, is really the epitome of mid-century modern, uh, designed by Eric Slater and introduced in 1956. It was last mentioned in the pattern book in 1960, so it's just that period. But I love the lack of fussiness about the Sterling and it works a treat with mid-century modern designs. And the next one across is Bristol, which was around 1960. I don't have an exact date for that. That seems to be a little bit of divergence in exactly when that was, but around 1960. And that's a sort of a more rounded shape, quite a simple shape still. And then to the right of that is Avon, which is the last new cup shape that Shelley produced, which came out in December, 1964. Um, is to me the most mid-century modern in a way, right to the end of their production. The, the left is the Avon coffee, and on the right is the Avon tea cup. And notice, I think really interesting is that they're actually the same size, whereas previously coffee cups were often smaller than tea cups, but I think that just shows the way post-World War II people were drinking coffee differently than than how it had been previously. So other shapes that Shelley put out plenty of other new cup shapes at the time. Some of them were not quite as simple. I aren't really, I, I don't think quite fit as well to the mid-century modern, but often will nevertheless have mid-century modern patterns on them and, and basically still fit within the whole theme. So there's Ripon on the left and then Richmond, New Cambridge, Henley, Windsor, all sort of can certainly ca carry off the mid-century modern theme. And then at some old favorites, um, Regent, Mocha, definitely carried on into that period and they look, you know, they're lovely clean, clean lines and, and go well with mid-century modern. And on the right is Late York, which didn't actually go to post-war, but it's still, I think, definitely on that design continuum. 
Okay, now we get to some examples. Now this one, I think by first is my absolute favorite of the mid-century modern designs. I just think it really epitomizes it. Now this is the Avon shape and this pattern was Naples and they both basically turned up in the pattern book in December of 1964. So definitely towards the end of uh, Shelley's production, which ended in mid 66. I just think the colors, the shape, the pattern, everything about that just screams mid-century modern. And that one is Naples, um, number 14281. Another one from the same time. I'll be, I'll be going backwards, by the way, if you're wondering the strange order of these. So I'm going sort of backwards generally from the 60s back towards the World War II. Um, so this one is Fjord here on Avon. Again, beautiful muted colors. Looks gorgeous on that. Here's Apollo on Avon, again, December 64. And I just think the shape of that, the, the design, it's just a classic, I love it. Then this one's Cleopatra, same sort of time. Originally, I think it was on Bristol, so it came out in 63, but then this one is on Avon, so it would have been from 64. Again, a beautiful mid-century modern pattern, a bit more feminine and soft with those colors. I'm not sure exactly why it's Cleopatra, but it, it is a feminine looking pattern. This one's Aegean. Again, very pretty, the blues, et cetera. And the interesting color mix of that sort of muted blue with the, with the fawn sort of color, really unusual pattern mix on the Avon T shape. So from December 64, now these ones were Harlequin, so that fits into the geometric styles. But again, because of the way the colors um, muted and an interesting color mix, it's just very wonderfully mid-century modern. So on the right there, it was the, the pattern was introduced in October 63 um, on the Bristol shape. And then it was also on the Avon shape on the left there in the blue Harlequin from December 64. Then this one was actually one of the last patterns from Shelley, it's Hathaway. And maybe you might think, does this fit my mid-century modern criteria? Because it's, it's much more an actual flower picture, but it's so, it is stylized, it's very in your face. It's almost to um, pop art, I think, so it's, uh, quite something. And here it is on Avon Coffee. And I just think it's a, it's a stunning set. Interestingly, this uh, came with the saucer. You could get this pattern on the saucer or you could get the saucer in plain yellow or the, or the green. And here's the Avon cups. I've got a set of six of these cups with no saucers. It's got no number. It's an unknown design, and I actually had a really close look at them the other day, and I think it might have been might be an after factory pattern, even though it looks very professional. It's not hand painted; it's like a, a litho or something. But um, I just think it's very mid-century modern. I'd love to know if anyone else has any of this or knows anything about it. I think they're quite fascinating. I picked them up for like $2 a cup somewhere. I can't even remember though, but they're just a fascinating little piece. Uh, going back, this is Caprice. So again, a stylized nature pattern on New Cambridge and on Henley coffee shape. The shapes aren't quite as mid-century modern, but the design really carries it off. A Windsor shape T for two with Sylvan on the left from 1961. And on the right, there's a Carlisle shape with Bailey's Acorn litho. Again, that's much more nature than fits my criteria exactly, but it's the colors are so muted, so lovely. On the left there, there's an unknown pattern on Richmond. It's again, 
very much mid-century modern, and the lime grove on Mocha on the right, the colors just really beautiful muted colors. These ones are the, the patterns again, really carry this off harmony on Ripon from December 1959. And there's Caribbean on Richmond from December 1960. I think they, they really speak of the period, these lovely pieces. And harmony again on, with the music theme and Caribbean with the place name theme. This one's this, going back now to the sterling shape items, this sterling shape from 1956. It's just such a wonderful, simple, straightforward shape. I can really picture that on that dining table at the Rose Seidler House. An enchantment on sterling, 1957. This is one of my favorite designs, just the beautiful stylized pattern and the colors I think are gorgeous. And there's, this is a wonderful set T for two in the sterling shape. Color is moonstone gray and it's with white enameled spots. And from January, 1957, just think that's stunning mid-century modern. Again, this is Lyric from 1957 on the sterling shape the, with the black handle and the Lyric, very 1950s. It's quite elegant. Again, another elegant um, sterling is evergreen. The stylized leaves, I think it's very pretty. And more sterling green leaves on pole star and pastoral is another popular one from that time in 1957. Very pretty. This one, sorry about the quality. This was taken a picture from the book. It's rhythm and symphony, both with that music theme again from around 1955. I think both of those are very beautiful abstract patterns, stylized patterns. There's Serenity on a demi tasse from 1958 and Fantasy. Fantasy on the right there in Sterling and Pink from 1956. Again, that's just uh, screams mid-century modern. It's really beautiful. Now going back a little bit further, this is um, right back to the Britain can make it. So the Board of Trade had asked for exhibits that were new and not traditional for the Britain Can Make It exhibition in 1946. And seven of Shelley pieces were chosen for that. One of them being from Veronica Ball, the others all by Eric Slater. And this was the Veronica Ball one. They're all relatively similar graffito type look to them, which I think definitely fits that mid-century modern. So it was interesting that the Board of Trade was looking for that modernist or modern new type at the time. There were some tankards around in the 1950 as well. They, I think these are wonderful pieces, the autumn leaves on the left, and then there's a, a number of these graffito ones on the right. I've just go through some of the, the fronts and backs of some of those, front and back of the same tankard there in greens, different greens. And I think this color is, you know, really epitomizes that sort of murky color and, and mid-century design. There's some graffito mocha cups and a powder bowl from that time with the acorn finial, I think it's gorgeous. And then on the right, there is this graffito on Gainsborough. Again, Gainsborough is not a, 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 a shape that you think of as mid-century modern, but it certainly carries off the design beautifully. And again, on Ripon, Ripon, it, you know, it's sort of the handle's too fancy and the, and the foot, etc., to really be mid-century modern, but it, that is really screams 1950s, doesn't it? And it, it carries off the pattern beautifully. I love those colors. 
And this one was on eBay recently. I just had to grab a picture of it because it's uh, definitely from, from that period and it's the most beautiful soft blue color with a, with a lovely design. Just think that's gorgeous, a gorgeous set. Now this one, I, I didn't manage to get any really mid-century modern, but I think that shape ovide, I ha had to um, include it because it's a, this one's a special pattern and with a fish on it, which doesn't really fit, but I just had to, had to grab that. And I'd love to know if anyone else has examples that might fit better into the theme. And snack sets, um, this one's Windsor and it's just with a, floral theme on it, but I'd love to know if anyone has any more mid-century modern shapes on snack sets, because I think that's, there's got to be some out there. So I know that that was a very popular thing in the, in the 50s and 60s. And I know Shelley did a lot of more traditional shapes in, in snack sets. So I'd love to know if anyone has any, please bring them out. Now I'm going back further. So I'm looking at some pre-World War II patterns. And it's basically, I'm sort of arguing that this is on the same design continuum. So from the 1940s, these patterns and, and these ones as well, on region, uh, 1939 on the right there, and 1938 on Cambridge. You can see the colors and the stylized patterns. As uh, even back into the 30s, those stylized and the colors. There was this one from the late 30s on Canadian tea wear, this Devon. I mean, the pattern on that is so like some of the other manufacturers' patterns in the 1950s. I can really see that as a mid century modern before that. And these as well from 1936. So you can sort of see the transition from, from Art Deco to mid-century modern, I think, in these, that they're really the more organic shapes and, and the nature type themes. I just thought it was really towards that same design continuum. And Harmony Wear, look, if they brought Harmony Wear out in the 1950s, I think, wouldn't that go, <clears throat> go a treat? And the Veronica Ball, a lot of the Veronica Ball designs from the 1930s, I think, are very much in that same design continuum. A lot of really, um, I guess I'm what I'm liking is, is the mid-century modern, is general modernism from Art Deco through to mid-century modern. And then I've just quickly put here at the end a little of what some of the other China manufacturers are doing had in mid-century modern. So there's Susie Cooper for Wedgwood on the left there as a Norotaki snack set on the right there. That's why I was thinking of that snack set, you know, there must, it would have been great if Shelley had more of those sort of organic shaped snack sets, which that, that's an opportunity missed as far as I'm concerned. But I love all of Shelley's mid-century modern and um, thank you very much to um, everyone who's contributed photos to this so that I uh, had photos from Bruce Sandy and Chris Davenport and Sue McBurney here. And uh, my main reference is Chris Davenport's wonderful book, Shelley Pottery, The Later Years, has some fantastic information in it. And of course, the Watkins Harvey and Sam book is this sort of Bible about Shelley generally. And also the wonderful article from Carolyn, must thank you again from the NSCC magazine from fall of 2022.